In this video, we're going to learn how to execute pester test using the invoke pester commandlet. On the screen here, I provided the URL to the pester wiki, which gives all the information for the invoke pester commandlet and all the parameters it has available. But the three we're going to concentrate on, the script parameter, but we will be using the path alias for the script parameter, the test name parameter, and the tag parameter. So let's begin. So what we're going to do we will run our invoke pester commandlet and as I said before we will be using the path alias uh, for the script parameter where we can specify a path invoke pester will do it will go and search the path that I'm specifying for all tests.ps1 files and then execute them so in our example I will go to our location that I have some a couple of test files as you can see I have bits tests and token test files so I can select get bits test file individually, execute my command, and it will then run my test. Or I can simply execute the command to the path itself, and it will run all the tests. Well, what if I don't want to run all the tests, I just want to run the get bits test. I don't really want to specify the file name. Another parameter you can use to do this is the test name itself. So a quick look what the test name is. So here is our get bits test. And in the scribe block you see I specified the name of test bits and a tag of bits which we'll get into later. And the other test I have for this example is the get token test. And in the scribe block once again you see I have a test token as the name and then token as a tag which we'll get into a little bit later. So if I now specify my test name of test bits, invoke pester, it will only run the specified test with the name test bits. As you see there, it ran my bits test and then did not run my token test. And vice versa, I can then say run get token, test token instead, and it will then run the test token test instead of the bits test. Well, when would I use the tag parameter? Well, for the tag parameter, let's go to a different location here. We'll say it's a little bit more real world where I have many more test files and I've created unit tests and some integration tests. So looking at those quickly, I've also named those as well. So here's the set bits running unit test. Now the other test type I have in this folder is an integration test. I've also named it set bits with the tag of integration. So now if I were to specify my test name set bits it will run all tests with the name of set bits. So it will run my integration test and my unit test. But what if I wanted to run all unit tests? Well, now I can specify my tag. And I have tagged all unit tests with the value of unit. So when I execute that, Pester will now execute all tests tagged with the unit value. And vice versa. If I specify integration instead, execute my pester commandlet, it will now run all tests that I had specified with the tag of integration. So this is a good way to group some particular tests like I did for my unit integration tests or whatever scenario you'd like to use it with. Uh, one last way to invoke pester is if I go to the particular location some tests are in and that way you don't have to specify a path parameter. Just another way of doing it. So I'll go back to my Pester Basics directory. And you see I have my two test files there. So instead of having to invoke Pester with the path parameter, I can invoke Pester itself. It will then execute just in this location only that I'm actually set in, which is Pester Basics. I can still specify one individual file, or of course use my test name parameter, use test bits and still, of course, use my tag. And I went ahead and also tagged these individual tests, and you see I only run the test bits tests. So that's how you can use uh, Invoke Pester to run some of your tests by using the tag, test name, and of course, path parameters. Thank you for watching this snip. Hope you found it very helpful, and please stay tuned for more.